Hey, everybody, it's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer questions you have sent in. There's a lot of them, so I guess we better jump in. All right, Joe. My wife and I have three kids, and we are worried that they will grow up thinking that we are favoring one over the other. <laughs> What's funny about that? We obviously love them all equally, but our time resources are not always equally given to each of them. No, they're not. How can we prioritize all of their needs without over-prioritizing <sighs> another's? Well, you can't. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Angel, now we, uh, we got a big family. We got eight kids. We don't spend an equal amount of time with all of them. Now they're adults. Like, you know, uh, you show up, I'll spend time with you. If you don't, I got stuff to do. And so even when they were small, uh, you had some kids that were high maintenance. They wanted a lot of attention. Uh, I remember kids used to fight. We'd sit down and watch a family movie on the couch on Friday night. And everybody wanted to sit next to dad. And so I remember every Friday night, it was a fight. Okay. Okay. You had your five minutes. It's my next five minutes. Then I get five minutes. Then I get five minutes. So I did this for several months. I realized this is crazy. I said, no more. You want to sit next to dad? You better fight for it. You better get here and have a seat because I'm not switching out. I want to enjoy the movie. <laughs> and so you realize some kids didn't need to sit next to dad. Some had to sit next to dad. Every child's different. They come out of that womb different. So what you're trying to do is meet the need that they've got. Some of my kids today as adults, they don't need to talk to me. Some like talk to me a lot. Every kid comes out different, so meet the need. It's not an equal amount of time. Nobody's following you around with a clock or a watch. Well, you gave them more time than me. Just meet the need that's there, and it'll go well. It'll go well. And I think being sensitive to what the Holy Spirit says about your children, I remember many times, but one particular that stands out to me, <clears throat> my son was uh, singing for his college during the summers he'd go on tour. And I woke up one day, I knew he was somewhere in Georgia, but I knew something was wrong. Something mm -hmm. was very wrong. And I couldn't get in touch with him. He was out, his phone wasn't in range. And finally called the school, got some connections, finally got a message to him. He got to the top of the mountain where he was. <clears throat> he said, Mom, I can barely have just a second, but I have a little bit of, um, you know, my phone works a little bit here. So, um, well, what do you need? I said, are you okay? I think I'm going to come this weekend. And he just got real quiet. And when I got there, I knew the look on his face. I knew it was a good thing that I had, co yeah. had come. And um, then when I went to leave, cause I was going to just be there for the night. <clears throat> he said, I, can I go with you? And um, I said, well, where was you? Where's your next thing? And it was several hours away, which meant I would miss a day of work. And the look on his face, I knew that it was more important for me to miss that day of work yeah. that, and be with him than it was to, to, to go to work that day. And so I did. And I was very glad I did because it didn't, it didn't come out all at once, but it came out over several hours of time with him that he needed some attention that was just some time with me and him. Now, he was a senior in college at yeah. that point. Yeah. But it was a very, very uh, important moment. And I've had many with my daughter, the same. Uh, remember when she was in high school, I couldn't find her. We didn't live in a very, we had an apartment, so she didn't have a lot of places to go. And I found her in, in a closet crying about her father. And uh, so just kind of funny. I'll just add this on. We went to a counselor said, we, we need to go to a counseling appointment. So we go to the counselor and I knew the counselor had known him for years. And we walked in and he said, what are you two girls here? Cause she just wanted me to go to the first appointment. She goes, what are you two girls here for? And I burst into tears <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me and she, said, That's not funny, she goes, you? I thought we were here for me. I guess I have some unresolved yeah. issues. God knows what your kids need more than you do. He does. And he'll guide you. He will guide you. You'll be in the right place at the right time. So it's one of those things where you wrote, he cares over to God for he cares for you. You'll be the great parent. You will be. Yes. You're the parent God wanted them to have. This is no accident. You're your child, whether they're adopted, whether you had them naturally, they're your kid. You're the right person. You'll say the right thing. It will go good. And even the fact that you wrote this down indicates how, how important each yes. of your children yes. are to you. And that will come across to them. Yes, it will. It will. Thank you for being who you are. Yes. Joe, I heard you say that God will restore finances that were stolen from me. Can you explain that a little more for me? I know he wants me to be financially prosperous, but I always worry that there is something I'm not doing or should be doing to work alongside. Well, him. there's some scriptures in Proverbs and one in Psalms where it says a thief 
If a thief steals, he has to pay back sevenfold. Well, the devil's a thief. That's who he is. He st steals, kills, destroys. He's the thief. He's the greatest thief on this planet. So if he's a thief, the scriptures apply to him. You steal from me, you owe me back seven times whatever you take. But you've got to put a demand on it. So you got to you got to go to God. And Bible says, you know, God wants to be reminded of his word. He said, put me in remembrance of my word, God said. So God, I remind you, you said that if a thief steals me, he owes me back sevenfold. So that was my stuff. That was my deal. That was my thing. That's mine. So I claim a sevenfold return from the devil. And I used to joke about with the kids. I said, I'll bankrupt hell. I'll bankrupt you. Don't touch my stuff because I'll come after you. So you don't just, don't just lay there and take it. Well, I guess we lost another one. Well, we lost another job or another contract or another opportunity. No, you lose nothing. No, I'm, I'm laying up stuff in the bank account. No, you owe me back devil sevenfold, but you have to put a demand on it. It's just like when you get saved, salvation is free, but you have to claim it. You know, you have to claim salvation. And so, uh, claim what belongs to you. Take a stand. Yeah. I agree. Well, she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we've all been there yes. where, you know, that somebody has done something improper and you've lost, like I said, a contract or money or something. And many times, unfortunately, it can be somebody that's in the body of Christ. Yes. And a lot you, of times that, it is. That you have to really guard your heart. Yes. And not get judgmental, not get mouthy, not criticize, <laughs> condemn, just keep your mouth shut. But say, devil i'm talking to the thief not the not the person the devil used i'm talking to the devil himself no you owe me back sevenfold i don't care who stole it i'm not mad at them they're they got flesh people go stupid every day it's an old thing when i talk panty abuse people good people go stupid every day so it's going to happen and it's not years you think well when i was in the military you know you got stripes based on how long you're in the military and so you build up tenure well there's no tenure in the body of christ i don't care if you've been walking with jesus 50 years the devil can still show up and steal you, steal you blind. So you have to take a stand every day of your life. It takes faith and walking in love and being forgiving and uh, not holding anything against him. Lord, I, don't, I, I know that that was, that was the devil trying to steal that him, using the him to steal from him. No, I claim a sevenfold return on my stuff. It's coming back somewhere else. It's coming back. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. That's coming back to me. So you got to use your faith on that. Yes. And it guards your heart. Yes. Joe, we have two kids and my husband does not want any more. I want, <laughs> I don't know why you think all these questions are funny. Well, they're because they're real. I want one to two more children. And my request seems to be falling on deaf ears. Our love life seems to be faltering as well. And I don't know if it's because of his fear of having more kids. Sure. Any advice? Well, you got to go to God. So you're you're going to take your husband to God. You know, uh, two cannot walk together unless they're agreed. And uh, strife and division is the devil's number one tool. He'll create strife between you, try to divide you. Uh, you know, you got to be able to walk together. Angel and I, we love one another, but we don't agree on a lot of stuff because we came up different. You know, we were raised different, we've lived different lives. But we have a great love for one another. So we're most of the time, we're very patient. You may not understand what she just said. She may understand what I just said, but let's be patient a minute. Let's see. Well, why did you say that? Why did you think that? Well, I grew up this way. You grew up that way. I've always thought that. That doesn't make me right. It just means that's the way I've always thought. So I'm still growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. So you got to be flexible. Take your husband to God. Father, I need you to soften his heart. Take the blinders off his mind. Uh, he's... He's fearful and nothing good happens when there's fear. Nothing. The opposite of faith is fear. And that's what the devil uses. He's afraid to have too many kids. Afraid he's going to be broke. Afraid he's not going to do with him. Afraid he'll never get his life back. He, won't, he, he married you. And all of a sudden the kids show up and they didn't have you anymore. You got the kids and they're number one priority in your list. And so men think a lot of things, you know, I worked with men all my life. So they think things, but what they do, they get blinded. So the number one thing, father, Take blindness from my husband's eyes and lighten eyes understanding. That I don't have a desire to be a mom again. I like to have them. And we all grew up different. I grew up in a big family. My dad and my father in law had 12 brothers and sisters. Uh, when my dad got married, he wanted one each. And so uh, he had one boy and one girl. So I never didn't have a brother. I always wanted a brother, but that's a no. God made two kinds. I want one each, and that's it. 
So when I got married, I, I switched that thing. I wanted a big family. So I had six kids. I like a big family and uh, still do. But that's me. That didn't make me holy. That didn't make me special in God's eyes. Uh, I had one of my favorite uncles, never had kids. He was like John Wayne to me, man. He was a man's man and uh, went to church every Sunday, uh, played golf, and paid his tithe, and uh, played a great piano. Uh, he was a uh, man sergeant major in the military, man's man. He just didn't want any kids. That didn't make him unholy, just made him different. <laughs> so uh, kids are a gift, though. I go back to the beginning in Genesis. You know, not good for man to be alone. I'll make him a help me. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Well, people say, well, there's too crowded. No, it's not. It's not too crowded. There's going to be a thousand year reign of Jesus on this existing planet. There's still, there's still a thousand years of food, bread, water, whatever we need. There's a thousand years of it left. We're not running out of anything. I don't care what people tell you, but you got to just be patient with them. So pray for them every day. Father, I want to thank you for my husband. Uh, give him the desires of his heart. But if he's desiring wrong, change it. Send people across his path. Send people to talk to him. You know, somebody at work, somebody in the next door neighbor will just talk to him one day across the fence. He'll send somebody. Yeah, but then, on, I mean, on the flip side of that, I, I'd like to say, uh, <clears throat> what what is it? Get to the bottom of it. What What's the reason he doesn't want more children? Yep. Yep. I mean, are your children, do they misbehave? Uh, is it more work than he thought it was going to be? <laughs> it's um, always more work, more money. Woo. And, and yes, yeah, the responsibility is the fact that he feels a distance from you. I mean, there, there could be a lot of elements that, of and reasons. there could be a little compromise for most of you. I mean, you don't have to necessarily maybe have two more children, but maybe one would be an option. <laughs> uh, but, but I mean, honestly, you need to get to the bottom of it. Like what, what is the reason for this? I mean, I personally think, you know, when your quiver's full. Yes. Every human does. <laughs> it's just full. You can say, well, I'm, I'm full. And for me, I wanted five. God gave me six, and I knew in that six, I thought, dear Lord, I don't want another one. But, you know, for me personally, three years later, kids are, you know, in school and growing. Do they? I thought, I'd like to have one more. And so we tried for for years. Didn't use any birth. And I tried for years to get pregnant. Couldn't. Now, we dropped babies like rain light in heaven, and all of a sudden, like, that's it. God said, that's it, son. Now your quiver's full. I thought, okay, I'm happy. I'm a happy man. I was just the opposite. I was married 10 years and didn't think I could have children and was shocked when I had one and extremely shocked when I had two. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> great kids, great kids. Yeah. I, I love having them, but, yeah. um, so something, the thing is with, with the, the peace and agreement has to come first between you and your spouse. Otherwise there'll be a breach and it'll be you and the kids and him over here. And you don't want that. No, you can't have that. That'll, that'll destroy because your marriage. Because biblically, it's you and him. Yes. And then them. Now, you know, you know <clears throat> just one more thing. You know, Angel is a great uh, adult mom. Uh, kids are grown, married, got great jobs. But she still likes to hang with them every now and then. And they come over the house and hang with us some. They're, she's a great mom. I mean, she is. I mean, after the mother times pass, she still has a relationship. Well, some, some adults don't want that. <laughs> I was kind of the opposite. I thought, well, my kids are up out of college, out of the house, married off. God bless you. If I don't see you until we get to heaven. God bless you. <laughs> so different people attract one another. It's just, it's just, but I love her that she's got a great relationship with them. They love her. They love her. Man, I love them. They're pretty little coolest people I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I always used to say whenever I say, oh, there's the coolest girl I ever knew. <laughs> she still brags on them. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Uh, Joe, my business saw a lot of growth in the last few years, but I am struggling with feeling it, of it never being enough. My work and family time is not balanced well, and I need some advice on how to do that. <clears throat> well, that's the news. Talk to your spouse. And, uh, well, I mean, I think acknowledgement is a step. You, that's huge. Yeah. The fact you just realized that you got the problem solved. <laughs> yeah. So now it's just prioritizing. And and getting your spouse involved in that. And know? then when you go home, turn your phone off. Ooh. Yeah. Home time's not just home time. <clears throat> um, now, we both have traveled for years. So, uh, you know, we... We got married. We changed some things. We cut off the rare sector television and we have a big, huge screen TV in our family room, but that's when we watch movies we want to. 
when we want to. So it doesn't dominate or necessarily separate us. Uh, I got things I can do. I got great office. I love to study, you know, but I'll get lost. I get in a book, I can be lost. And the angel has to step in. Hey, Joe, come on in here a little bit. I said, yes, ma'am. And so we're still amending and repairing, even as adults that teach on the family. And so everybody's learning, you know, so do whatever you think you can do it. And uh, whatever it is you need, God's already supplied all you need. So you got the ability to make this thing work, whatever it is. That's the simplest answer I can give. Yeah, but I think the first and foremost thing I do is sit down with my spouse and say, yes. what are some things I could do? Can I change something? To pr- prioritize this better. And you're probably shocked that they don't want near as much you think they want. Yeah, probably so. Just, just a little amending and repairing and adjusting. Guys, we so appreciate you being with us on Mondays. We love our time with you. We do. <laughs> Thank hey, you. And if you ever, you ever have some thought about it, you can go to uh, JoeMcGeeMinistries.com. We can download so many things we've got on there that are free. We've got products on there that are really good. And we got a place for sign up as a partner. What we do, the way we're able to do this, they said we have partners that pay for this. Or we couldn't do this. So we're all over the country. We're around the world, actually. Our podcasts go everywhere. And so we're on three times a week. So if you ever have a thought that God leads you to maybe partner with us, we would sincerely appreciate that. And we would be real good steward of in Jesus name. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Go home and hug and kiss everybody in the house. Right. Love you. Bye-bye. Bless. <laughs>